Imagine you're living in the Stone Age. You've got a house made of stone. It's got cupboards made of stone. It's got a bed in it made of stone. Your hearth, stone. Your toilet, stone, attached to a sewage system made of stone. That sounds almost sarcastic. Like, of course, just because it's the Stone Age doesn't mean everything was literally made of stone. But the funny thing is, here on the Orkney Islands of Scotland, that's literally how it was. Scarabray is a prehistoric village located on the west of mainland, which, ironically, is the largest island in the Orkney chain. It was discovered in 1850 after a severe storm stripped 43 centuries of soil and sand off of what was assumed to be a natural mound and revealed the outlines of buildings. The locals here, once they recovered from the storm that resulted in over 200 deaths, did a bit of excavating to determine the origin of the foundations, but the area wasn't officially excavated until the mid-1920s. By then, most of the artifacts had been removed by plunderers looking for relics they could sell. It is believed the village was inhabited around 3180 to 2500 BC, before the pyramids of Giza were even built, or even Stonehenge was built. The people who built this and lived here were known as the Groovedware peoples, for their distinctive style of pottery, which started here in the Orkneys before being introduced to the rest of the British and Irish Isles. They were generally thought to be pastoralists, meaning they raised sheep and cattle, and agriculture was limited to mostly barley, maybe some beans and the like. All of this would most likely be supplemented by what they could get from the sea, which they built their village literally next to. These individuals were pretty intrepid, considering they left Scotland only 300 years after the Stone Age really came to fruition there, climbed into boats with livestock and everything else needed to survive, and headed north of all directions. What they found was the relatively mild climate and lush greenery of the Orkneys, though. Scarabray itself was built into what's known as a midden, which is essentially a Stone Age dump. Piled up masses of shells, animal bones, compost material, and maybe even animal manure, it was strategically chosen because those materials would provide excellent insulation against the weather. What's somewhat strange though, as far as structures here in Orkney are concerned, was the complexity of the excavation site. The islands themselves had upwards of 10,000 residents, which was massive for the time. Most individuals lived in small communities of individual huts or structures. But Scarabray was its own little network. With one main entrance, you would stoop down and enter into a mostly underground or covered complex, with winding tunnels leading you to eight individual families' homes. Each home itself was fairly spacious, with a central hearth to keep the family warm, and made up of all those stone structures I mentioned before. Only a few dozen people lived in the entire structure, and you gotta assume they were a pretty close-knit community. The houses are fairly open to one another, though each had an internal door that could be secured. Small areas within each home appear to have been used for private storage. Additionally, one of the houses, or rooms, number seven, could only be sealed from the outside. This raises the obvious question of, well, why? Was it a type of jail, potentially ritualistic in nature, a location to forcibly quarantine sick people? No one's really sure. What is known, though, is that bodies of two women were found buried there, which would hint at it having a significant meaning within the small group of families. Most interesting, though, was the indoor plumbing. A crude sewage system was built, bringing a natural water source flowing through the site, and areas that appear to be indoor bathrooms were constructed. This was amazingly advanced, with the majority of Britain not getting indoor plumbing until the late 19th century, and with communal toilets of the Romans still being almost 3,000 years away from adoption. Yet here, in Stone Age Orkney, people could comfortably relieve themselves even during the harshest of weather. I use the term comfortably loosely because life here wasn't exactly luxurious or in any way serene. The average life expectancy was still only in the 30s. People over 50 were probably like modern-day centenarians, almost suspiciously old. Though as far as Stone Age life goes, it was probably about as good as it gets. Art left behind shows that there was at least some free time for activities that didn't directly relate to survival. They also probably ate pretty well. Besides the sheep and cows they brought from Britain, they may have had goats to raise, with deer and smaller animals to hunt. Fish and shellfish, and maybe even the occasional seal might have been caught. 
and for 10,000 people to live on the island, some level of farming and agriculture must have been widely established. And 10,000 people is an enormous amount, especially considering that even today, the number's not much higher for residents here on the island. The whole island was interconnected, and it's almost a guarantee that the different communities would come together for the greater good. This is made apparent at spots nearby, such as the Stones of Stennis, Mays Howe, and the Ness of Brodgar. These three ancient sites all came to life right around when Scar Bray was inhabited. The residents here almost certainly took part in their construction. From the shoreline here at Scar Bray, to the furthest of those three sites was only six miles. To go there, participate in whatever cultural event or ritual was occurring, and walk back, would have been a day's journey, easy even in the Stone Age. The stones of Stennis are a henge, similar in plan to the much more famous Stonehenge. A bigger henge, the Ring of Brodgar, sits nearby it. Between the two is the Ness of Brodgar, a massive temple complex. The Ness was only discovered about 20 years ago, and excavations are still ongoing to determine its role in the culture here. These, along with Mays Howe, which was a burial chamber, are all built with expert knowledge of astronomy and time. Mays Howe, in particular, is situated so that its doorway is aligned to the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. All of these were built around the same time, around or shortly after 3000 BC, and all of them would have been connected by a ceremonial pathway. All of them would have required community effort to conceive, construct, and maintain. It shows a deep interconnectedness among the smaller communities on the islands in support of the whole society. So what happened here? Where did everybody go? By the time the Vikings showed up 3,000 years later, this area was already ancient. Dating at Scar Bray suggests that it was in use for about 600 years, until about 2500 BC. It was mostly abandoned while the Great Pyramids of Giza were still in their infancy. Many suggestions have been made, the usual suspects of conflict, natural disaster, illness, but it might not be that dramatic. In fact, weapons are almost non-existent in these archaeological digs. The answer might come as a result of that deep interconnectedness that the smaller villages shared with one another. Just like in small towns around the world, the younger generation has a tendency of creeping away from the small villages and towns as cities grow nearby. The same may have been true here, where even after generations of families living together, all it might take is a small sense of adventure to lure someone away from the flock. Opportunity lay elsewhere. As time goes on and either more people leave or less are around to replenish the population, it may become unsustainable for the residents to continue to live here. It most likely wasn't abandoned all at once, but in stages. Once the last person left though, nature was free to take over, and in the following 43 centuries, that's exactly what it did, until nothing remained exposed and it appeared to be just a garden variety mound. Not a lot is known about how the society as a whole broke apart though. Recent excavations at the Ness of Brodgar show a fascinating event having happened between 2400 and 2200 BC though. At some point in the short period of time, approximately 400 cows were ritualistically slaughtered for a massive feast. Their bones were laid out around one of the structures at the Ness, and then a single upturned cow's skull was placed in the center of the chamber. Once the feast was over, red deer carcasses were placed upon the bones, and then the entire structure was demolished, likely taking several hundred people to accomplish. This appears to be a climactic end to something. Archaeologists just aren't sure what. For a group of people to destroy their own temple after its existence for almost a thousand years is a strange and powerful message. The Orkneys would never be the same, and the cultural hub of the islands shifted to mainland Britain after this time. Nothing from this culture is written down, but what remains here, archaeologically, tells a very interesting story that's probably only scratching the surface. You can check out another video here. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers for helping me get here. And as always, until next time, get lost.